Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing and overview on this eerily familiar motherboard from MSI. This is the MSI 990FXA GD80 V2. Now the reason this motherboard is so familiar is that the 990FXA GD80 actually has already been out for a while. The V2 is an indication that this motherboard is guaranteed to ship with at least BIOS version 11.9 and the reason you might need BIOS version 11.9 is because uh, AMD has recently come out with a new updated line of their FX processors. So these are um, sometimes called FX second gen FX processors and uh, like this one right here the numbers on the processor itself for instance uh, right down on that one the second digit will be a 3 instead of a 1. So the first gen FX processors from this line for instance would be a 8150 and since this is a second gen it's 8350. Now if you try to take a Vishera codename processor like this one, that's the codename for the second gen ones, and install it in one of the uh, original 990FX AGD80 motherboards it would not uh, immediately be recognized unless of course you updated the BIOS first. So uh, by separating that and putting a V2 line they're guaranteeing that uh, if you purchase this board and you purchase a Vishera second gen FX processor it will work right out of the box and actually there are some even further updates than 11.9 as, as far as the BIOS go goes as of uh, October 9th they're up to BIOS version 11.13 so you can uh, update that if you want to take full advantage of your processor and all the motherboard's capabilities. But that said, let's go over some of the features of the board. This is a military class 2 motherboard, so they're using super ferrite chokes, uh, high C caps, solid capacitors on the board. Uh, they're making sure that all of the components on the board are high quality, that they're going to run smoothly and, efficiency even at, smoothly and efficiently even at high temperatures, and of course add to the longevity of the board. Uh, as mentioned, AM3 CPU with the new BIOS, uh, you get some features up here such as support for NVIDIA SLI as well as AMD Radeon Crossfire X support. It's compatible with Windows 7, also compatible with Windows 8. You get uh, support of course for the unlocked FX processors, both the first gen and the second gen Beshera processors. This is a 9 series chipset motherboard, the 990FX which is the top of the line uh, chipset. That is the Northbridge chipset, it also has a Southbridge 950SB chip in there as well. You get OC Genie 2, which is a simple push button overclocking feature on the motherboard. Uh, you get four USB 3.0 ports, six native SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, which is a pretty awesome selling point of the, of the 950 Southbridge. Uh, you actually get tons of SATA 6 gigabit per second. So if you want to throw in a bunch of SSDs, for example, that's a great uh, option to do that. Uh, you get an updated BIOS with mouse support, so UEFI BIOS with uh, clicking enabled. Uh, you get supercharger ports, so USB ports that uh, have higher amperage, also that will stay active even while the system is off, so you can charge devices even while your computer's off. Uh, THX Truth Studio Pro Audio. Down here is a uh, layout of the board with some of the PCI lanes and everything. I'm going to go over all this stuff in detail when I take a look at the board. Here's a quick look at the back of the box. A lot of that same stuff that I already mentioned is repeated, so we're going to go ahead with an unboxing. Inside the box, we have a quick guide. So this is MSI's full color fold out guide with the layout of the board printed out in color, pointing out what's what. It's very handy to have. And look, all the stuff on the box repeated once, once again. They're making sure to drive all that stuff home. Apart from that, we have an input output shield. It is black in color. There's a look at that. You have a driver disc with drivers and utilities. You can download more updated versions of these from the MSI website. You get a user guide for the HDD backup utility. You also get a black and white user guide that has quite a few additional languages. So if in English is not your first language, this is sort of going to walk you through some basic installation procedures, such as installing a graphics card. Of course, for that, you can also check out our How to Build a Computer video tutorial on our Newegg TV YouTube channel. Here's a military class 2 certification card indicating the high quality components that have been used and certified on the board. Here's a guide for the software and applications that are included on that software and applications disk. Here is a 990FX AGD80 motherboard manual, and this is the important one that you'll want to make sure you keep on hand while you're doing your build. This will uh, sort of list out all of the mm, small components that are in there, as well as the package contents, as well as more important stuff such as which DIMM slots to use when you're installing memory. Let's see what else we have in here. Here's the fun stuff. Good accessories. A very nice selection has been provided by MSI, so let's see. First off, we have 
a flexible SLI bridge. So this is for two-way SLI, and it's flexible. So if you're going with, uh, this looks like it's probably one to four slot spacing. You can adapt to any of those. You also have a much longer SLI bridge. So I guess if you wanted to do uh, more spacing in between your cards, you can use that one. That one also has the MSI logo on it. And then here we also have an included another SLI bridge. Okay, they're providing lots of SLI bridges for this. There you go. I thought one of those was going to be Crossfire, but if you're going to be running Crossfire, typically the Crossfire bridges will be included with the Crossfire capable video card that you purchase. Here is a PCI, I'm sorry, <laughs> PCI slot adapter, and this has a couple USB 3.0 ports on it, and the USB 3.0 20 pin connector to plug into your motherboard. You have the MSI M connectors, and uh, these will allow you to do certain things, such as take your uh, front panel connectors, plug them into this block, plug the block into the uh, motherboard, or if you actually have a, a case that has individual USB leads, for example, you can use that to make that process a little bit more simple. Here are your power and data connector cables. So you get a total of uh, four white Serial ATA Revision 3 compatible cables. Uh, two of them are straight plugs on both ends. The other two have a straight plug and a angled, 90 degree angle plug. You also get a couple Molex to Serial ATA adapters, which I really like to have these around because if you're doing a build and for instance you have a power supply and you're running cables and you're like, oh, I want to use this Molex plug and convert it. Just nice to have those. Oh, look, two more Serial ATA cables. So these are black uh, with white plugs on the end. And again, uh, actually these are both uh, straight plug on one end, 90 degree angled plug on the other end. So a total of six Serial ATA cables. And that's all for accessories. As you can see, the GD80 V2 has a overall black and blue color scheme. The PCB as well is a dark brown sort of a semi-gloss finish. So here's a look at the black, just so you guys can get a better look at the color on that. There, of course, is the back plate for the uh, CPU cooler retention mechanism for the AM3 Plus uh, CPU. Also, the heat sinks on the board are all mounted with Phillips head, uh, spring-loaded spring Phillips head screws, so you can remove those if you so desire in the future. Taking a look at the board overall, I want to point out the fan headers. There are a total of five, including the CPU fan header. So starting with the CPU fan, that's right at the top here, and that's a four-pin fan header. The rest are three-pin headers. You have one up here on the top left, one here in the middle right, one here in the bottom right, and then one here just to the left of the PCI slots. Next up, we're going to take a close-up look at all the components on the board. We're going to start down here in the lower right-hand corner because that's where I like to start. So uh, first off, we have some headers, and these are going to be your front panel headers right there, as well as a trusted platform module header. Uh, and then to the left of that, you actually have, uh, well, first off, you have your uh, clear CMOS jumper right there. And then you actually have a post LED indicator. So what that's used for is as the board goes through post, the LED indicator will show different codes depending on what part it's actually accessing and, and going through power on self-test with. And if the board happens to halt or fail in any one of those uh, points, you can uh, reference the code on the, uh, on the post LED and that will help you better determine what the issue might be if you're having any problems getting the board up and running. To the left of that, we have a USB 2.0 front panel connector or rear panel connector, whatever the case may be. You also have this one with the red uh, printing behind it. And that is actually one of those uh, higher power and always on USB headers. So you can connect that. Uh, this is a good one to connect to the front panel because that is one of the ones that will be always on and you can use to charge devices even while your system is off. To the left of that, we have some surface mounted power and reset buttons as well as the OC Genie button. That's the one button push to overclock button right there. To the left of that we have a COM header. To the left of that we have a 1394 Firewire header. Then we have a SPDIF header as well as your audio connectors. So that is those for audio. Up here we have a little THX logo over the actual audio codec chip which is a Realtek ALC892 audio codec. Uh, and then to the right of that, we have our PCI Express slots. You also have a single uh, legacy PCI slot right in the middle there if you have an older device that you want to plug in that still uses PCI. Apart from that, we have lots of PCI Express slots. The blue ones are all full-length X16 slots. Uh, they're going to run at different speeds depending on what you have connected, but also then up here you have a couple single-speed PCI Express X1 connectors. So if you're connecting a video card or any other device uh, such as perhaps a RAID control that uses higher bandwidth, you're going to want to use these blue slots. Uh, you can actually do up to four-way 
Crossfire X configurations here with video cards, assuming, of course, that you're using single slot cards because the bottom two slots there are not double spaced. You can do three-way Crossfire X with two slot cards. You can also do three-way SLI, and then, of course, uh, two-way Crossfire X and SLI, or a single card. So a single, single card, if you're plugging in, that's going to go in the top slot here. That's a full-length X16 slot that's going to run at X16 speeds with just about every configuration unless you populate all four slots. Middle one here is, an, is wired for X8. So that's going to run at X8 or X4, depending on what you have connected. Uh, if you're going to go with a two-way setup, you're going to want to use this top slot right here and then uh, slot number five, which is labeled right here. You can see underneath PCIe 5. Those will, those will run at X16, X16 if you have both of those connected. And then if you go with three-way, it's going to be X16, X8, and X8. Uh, moving on from the PCI slot area to the right, we have the MSI logoed heatsink, and that is over the 950SB Southbridge chipset and that is going to control a lot of the I.O. on the board and uh, different connectivity. Start, for starters it is going to control all six of these uh, serial ATA connectors. So you have SATA, Rev3 and all six of these. That's six gigabits, six gigabits per second maximum throughput. You also have a right angled USB 3.0 connector right there and that uh, USB 3.0 is powered by an add-on chip by NEC to the, I'm sorry, above I should say those connectors. The aforementioned 3-pin uh, fan header. Above that's your 24-pin main motherboard connector. And then uh, all the way up at the top here you actually have some uh, CPU power phase LEDs. So right above the DDR3 slot. So you'll notice NB phase 1 and 2. So there's it's two-phase power delivery for the 990FX Northbridge. You also have eight-phase power delivery for the CPU. And those LEDs will light up depending on the load. So you can determine if you're actually using all the power that uh, the CPU needs or when the CPU is under, under load and uh, give you a bit better indication of how much uh, power your CPU is actually using. Uh, beneath that you have your DDR3 slot. So this is going to be dual-channel DDR3 and this supports overclock speeds of up to 2133. Official support goes up to 1333. And then, of course, overclocks up to 1600, 1800, 2133, respectively. Uh, you're going to want to populate at least two channels, or at least two DIMMs in here of the same, um, preferably the same manufacturer speed and capacity. Uh, you'll want to start with the two black ports there. And then if you go with four, four DIMMs, you'll populate all four, of course. Uh, DDR3, dual channel. And I think that's about all there is to say about the memory. Moving to the left of that, you have your AM3 Plus socket. So the black socket right there in the middle with the standard AMD CPU uh, heatsink fan retention mechanism. That's where you will slot in your FX uh, or FX second gen processor. Uh, again, this is a V2 board, so it will support the Vichera processors right out of the box. To the left of that, you can see your power delivery. So this is all the military class 2. Uh, components that they've been talking about. You can count all the phases there. There are 10 and uh, them being high quality phases should provide pretty nice stable overclocks for the CPU if that's the route that you're going. You also have some uh, pretty nice cooling mechanisms here or cooling solutions I should say for the uh, power delivery. So you have the military class 2 uh, nice fat heat sink right here. There's a heat pipe going between that and uh, the uh, other heat sink that is located right below uh, so this one here on the left is for the power delivery. This one right here is for the 990FX chipset. To the left of the uh, heatsink right there, we have the 8-pin supplemental CPU power connector. Make sure you remember to connect that, or you're not going to get your system to boot up properly, and you're especially not going to be able to get any overclocks. And we will finish off with the inputs and outputs here on the side of the board. So you have both a mouse and keyboard PS2 port, so especially for folks who have maybe a uh, special mechanical keyboard with N key rollover. A lot of times you need to connect via PS2, so there's a nice feature. You have a clear CMOS button right there on the back, so you don't have to get inside your case if you do want it to do a full reset on your system's CMOS and BIOS settings. You have an optical Toslink connector right there, so you can do uh, high definition out uh, or Toslink audio out. You also have a coax audio connector. So that's available as well using a uh, what is typically referred to as an RCA style plug. Uh, you also have a, a FireWire port there on the back. You have a couple USB 2.0 ports right here, a couple more USB 2.0 ports right here. These are actually combo ports. These are eSATA slash USB combo ports. 
and those are controlled by a J Micron JMB362. They're uh, SATA 6 gigabit per second ports, so you can connect some external eSATA drives via that. You have your Ethernet connector right there, and that is a Realtek RTL8111E gigabit Ethernet port. You also have a couple more USB 3.0 ports, and then finally you have your analog connectors there for your audio. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been the MSI 990FXA GDA V2 motherboard for AMD 2nd Gen FX, aka Vishera processors. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can find more on our Newegg YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.